All right, Anthony Hartley here. We're inside Cardinal Mooney, a girl soccer player profile. We have one of the captains and juniors, Frankie Cassis. Frankie, thank you so much for coming on and joining us today. Thank you for having me. You got it. So here you are as an upperclassman for the first time. What's it feel like to be kind of one of the older girls now and no longer one of the, the freshman sophomores on the team? Honestly, it's so exciting, and I'm just so excited to be a captain this year. You know, I've put a lot of time and effort and worked really hard, and I'm just excited to be a leader this year. Yeah, let's talk about those leadership responsibilities. It comes with being an upperclassman, but then you add on to it that you were made a captain this year. How have you been handling a lot of the uh, responsibilities put on your shoulders? Honestly, I've been handling the responsibilities put on my shoulders just by reflecting back on the leaders we've had in the past years. We've had some really great captains, Kendall Scriber, Ella Zale, Maggie McGlone. They've just done such a great job building up the program over the past couple of years. And so honestly, it just made stepping into the leadership so much easier. Were you ever kind of nervous about it when you were told like, hey, you're going to be someone that we ask a lot of this year and, and you're going to be a captain? I mean, yeah, there's like some nerves that come with it, of course. But honestly, like the girls just give me so much respect and just look up to me. It honestly just makes it so much easy just having the girls and my friends with me. How would you describe your leadership qualities? Like what kind of leader would you say you are? I would say I'm definitely a vocal leader, very loud. I say it how it is, you know, but and I come off tough, but the girls know that about me. It's never personal on the field, so definitely a vocal leader let's talk about your soccer journey when did you kind of pick up the sport when did you find yourself falling in love with it oh just when i was little you know i started playing when i was like four or five years old and i got into club um in like the fourth grade and i just fell in love with it i love the tournaments love the game love playing love the practices just everything about it there's a lot of soccer that you get to play, right? I mean, you have to work so hard at your craft, as you said before. Um, there are probably days when you don't feel like working as hard as you do on, on the field, whether it be in practices or maybe in the off season, in the workouts. What keeps you driven? What are, what are some things that keep you locked in on those days when you don't really feel like doing it? Honestly, on the days where I don't feel like doing it, I just have to look to my teammates and my coaches always just giving me the confidence and pushing me to be the best. Um, just always doing it for the people around me. I like that you brought up confidence because it's easy to tell that you have so much confidence in yourself and in your teammates out on the field. Where does that come from? Where do you think you get your confidence? Honestly, it goes back to the role models in my life. My parents, my friends, my coaches, my teachers, just always building me up and giving me the confidence and the constructive criticism that comes with that and giving the positives when they're positive and talking about the negatives when they're negative has just given me so much confidence, just always having good role models to look to. As we're talking about that confidence, I mean, we talked about, you know, the nerves that could come with being named a captain, but what kind of confidence did it give you knowing that your coaches trusted you enough to say, Hey, we're going to put you in this spot. Talk about your coaching staff and the confidence they've instilled in you just by trusting you enough with responsibilities. Honestly, having coaches that just believe in you and are confident in you makes all the difference. Coach Agni and Coach Britta have just done such a great job over the past three years of just building up the entire team's confidence and my own personal confidence, just never doubting me, giving me a heavy load, but then balancing that with like rewarding, feeling rewarded. And, you know, we had the addition this year of Kat Tagaboni and she played under Agni at Boardman High School, and she's just been so great this year. She's always willing to put in the extra effort and spending extra time with us. And I honestly, it's just made such a difference in like everybody's personal experience this year. You know, you can't go around Mooney High School without seeing the, the new turf and how nice it looks out there for you guys. What's that like? It's so nice, and it's so rewarding, and it's just so exciting. It's really great, and it was really rough to play on before. So it's just exciting, and having home games now for soccer, and I'm looking forward to lacrosse. It's just it's so great. Yeah, let's talk about the the other sports you play. I mean, we see you uh, in, in Mooney Athletics, you know, throughout the year. So what's it like transitioning? What what are some of the things that you like about keeping yourself busy? Honestly, I would really consider myself a busy person, but I really do like it that way. You just have to take the time to embrace the busyness and just be grateful for everything and not let it distract you too much. But it's definitely a lot going from sport to sport. But 
again, just talking and communicating with coaches and having coaches here at Mooney that just are understanding and give you so much confidence and are willing to work with you just makes the whole thing so much easier. I think embrace the business should be like a t-shirt now. That's yeah. a great, great gym. Um, when you think about the big thing about being a multiple sport athlete is you have to be good at time management, right? You have to be able to organize yourself. Have you always been good at that or is that something that you've developed throughout your high school career? It's definitely developed over my high school career, but I've definitely always kind of considered myself a very organized person. I like things in order. I like knowing what I'm going to have, but high school definitely hit hard and having to balance the school load along with the practice load, you just have to manage your time. No one plays as many sports as you do for as long as you do without hitting some kind of adversity, like something that a mental block or an injury or something that has kind of gotten your way. I want you to talk about what you think your biggest form of adversity has been so far in your career and then tell us kind of how you got through it. Honestly, my biggest form of adversity, I think, was honestly coming into this junior year without having some of the leaders and role models we've had in the past years. Like I mentioned before, LSLA, Kendall Scriber, Maggie Malone were just such important captains and leaders to the team. Not having them in the midfield this year, just it really did make a difference this year. And going into the first couple of games, having to make those adjustments and learning how to play without them, but not even missing their talent and their skills on the field, but just their their personality and the leadership qualities that they bring definitely was hard as a captain to pick up where they left off and keep it going. How much do you see yourself, you know, kind of in them? Like how much do you see their footprints or their, their handprints in the way you lead now? Every single day, every single day I can think of something and be like, oh, I definitely got that from Maggie or, oh, I got that from Kendall. And just Mooney's all about tradition. So just keeping the traditions that they've started and like carrying them on. Yeah, I want to talk about that Mooney, Mooney tradition. It goes long time in your family. We know that. Um, what's it like to be a part of this Mooney tradition now and to be, you know, a member of so many sports and so many kind of athletic programs and hopefully be able to put your name up in that wall uh, at some point in time in the future? Honestly, it feels great. And it just feels great to have this much success through high school and just to be able to reflect back on everything mm -hmm. that my family and everybody else has done. It's just a really good feeling. I think your family goes down as one of like the hallmarks of Youngstown. Everyone <laughs> knows that Cassis. As soon as they hear that name, they go, oh, um, let's talk about your family and what it's like to be a part of it and, and what makes it special to you. My family is honestly probably the thing I'm most proud of. They're so special to me and so supportive. And I know that if I didn't have the family I have, I wouldn't be where I'm at. And correlating to soccer, they just give me so much confidence, like I said earlier, always picking me up, being so supportive of me. And that just really helps, you know, to have such a great support system. And on those hard days and like when going through adversity, like we talked about earlier, I can always look to them for leadership and advice and not everybody has that, and that's one of the things I've learned. So I never take it for granted, and I'm incredibly grateful. As we're talking about the tradition of Mooney Athletics, I mean, we look in your background, we see trophies. We look in the gym, we see state banners all over the place. Um, do you ever kind of look around and think, man, I can be a part of this if, if you know things go right and I can, I can put banners up and I can put trophies in this room? Yeah, for sure. We always come into the season, especially in soccer, ready to go, ready to get back to districts like we did my freshman year. And, you know, that's always the goal. And it just feels so great to be a part of such a great, successful tradition. Was it ever daunting, especially when you were younger, to look around and see all the success and, and be like, man, this this the school means business when it comes to sports? I mean, it definitely gives pressure. Yeah, but it's also something to like look forward to. Let's talk about you outside of the field, in the classroom first. You're a student athlete. Student comes first in that phrase for a reason. What are some of your favorite things to study? Honestly, I really love studying English. Um, reading is probably my sub strongest subject. Reading and English are my favorite. I don't want to more at least favorite. I don't want to dig any of the teachers out there and make them feel bad. But what, what's, what's the class that pushes you, a class that you would label as like the hardest? Um, the class that pushes me the hardest is definitely math. Um, definitely stronger, like I said, in the reading and English than I am in the math. But again, it's just giving me something to push me even further. And, you know, it's a challenge, but pushing myself to work hard in that class and just get better. 
when people answer English and reading is their favorite subject, I always like to ask them because one of the big parts of English classes is the, the books you're assigned to read. What's your favorite book uh, so far as an assignment that you've had? Honestly, I really don't know what my favorite book might have been, but um, I don't really, I like reading in English, but I don't really read that much surprisingly, but definitely like all the quotes, um, now we've gone over in English. Some of them really do make like a difference and things I can look back on. All right. Well, what's your favorite type of thing to write? I mean, do you like it when the English class says here's a prompt or maybe creative writing, or do you like the book reports a little bit? What, what, what are the, which ones get you to flex your muscles? Honestly, just a prompt, something I can just go with the flow, write with, and just let like the creativity part of it take over. When you think about teachers in the Mooney system so far that have really impacted your journey, are there any that come to mind? For sure. Um, Miss Policy, for sure, is always pushing me to work hard. She's part of the science department here, just always pushing me. You know, she's tough, but I know I'm going to leave Mooney being super prepared to head into the medical field if I decide that's what I want to do. Um, Mr. Butler is an art teacher here. He's really nice and great. Junior year is when some people start to, you know, let that future sink into their head a little bit. You still have a year left, of course. But uh, have you let anything like what you want to do or where you want to go start to enter your thoughts yet? Yes and no. You know, it's always there's so much time, but so much little time. So I'm just excited to start the process. And I know I'm going to end up where I'm supposed to be. So I'm not trying to stress about it too much, but maybe something more medical. Do you have like a, um, I don't want to say dream school, but maybe like a dream place to go, a dream state? Do you want to go far from home? Do you want to kind of stay local? Do you have anything like that? Honestly, I'm such a homebody. I would really honestly be so grateful to go to YSU and play soccer there and stay close to home. Well, there you go. My next question was, do you want to pursue a career in soccer? And obviously that is something you would like to do. What are some things that excite you? about the possibility of playing uh, soccer at the next level? Just honestly so excited. And if everything works out the way it's supposed to, it would just be great. I love soccer. I'm not ready to give it up. So I'd be really excited to take it to the collegiate level. We talked about some of your on-the-field role models and some of the leaders that you've looked up to in the past on this team. Uh, what about kind of real-life role models? Uh, not that the players in the past aren't real. But, you know, off-the-field role models, people in your everyday life that you think you've looked up to, whether it be family members or maybe acquaintances that have taught you a lot. Honestly, just my parents. Like, my mom and dad have taught me so much, and we just have such a great relationship with them. I really couldn't be where I am without them. So them just giving me confidence, like I said earlier, but then also just keeping me grounded and showing me, introducing me to faith and sending me to Mooney has just made such a difference in my life. As we expand on the important people in your life, we like to end these player profiles the same way every time. I want to give the player the chance to take the limelight off themselves a little bit. We've been talking about you for so long. I want you to talk about the people that you know have supported you and, and the people that have really meant the most to you. I want to give you the time to give shout outs and thank yous to the people in your life that you think deserve it. So start my parents. They support me through everything. My coaches, Coach Agni, Coach Britta, Coach Kat, done such a great job with me this year and really couldn't do it without them. My teammates, of course. Um, and then my friends outside of soccer, you know, just always coming to support me. Sophia Rattuno, Natalie Blasco, they play volleyball and I love to see their success too. They're both having such a great year and just the, it's great that we just get to support each other. Well, Frankie, we, we want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on, talk to us about your soccer season. Wish you the best of luck the rest of this year. We can't wait to talk again real soon. Thank you so much for having me.